Ladies and gentlemen, gamers, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a hot minute since I've posted a video, guys. This might be the longest that I've ever gone without posting a video, I think eight or nine days. So my apologies for that. It's been a super, super busy time for me. Been out of town, uh, just been swamped with a lot of transitions. Some exciting news that I might be able to share in the future, hopefully soon, uh, but we'll see. Uh, but it's good to be back making content. Uh, I've missed playing Co. I haven't played in like six, seven days. Uh, which is extremely painful because when I come back, I'm going to be pretty rusty. Um, but some news has been dropped over the past week by Relic. Uh, we got the mission briefing, we got unit responsiveness, and we got balance changes coming this week. So I expect the update to be here Wednesday, Thursday, some something along those lines. Um, uh, but let's go and see what's in store for us here. So the 1.6.5 PC patch following our Coral Viper update will be available for Company of Heroes 3 this week. Here's a quick rundown of what's coming. This patch includes notable quality of life improvements as requested by our players, such as map preference voting and improvements to input latency. So both of these are huge. Uh, map vetoes and input latency, as we'll see a little bit later, is one of the most fundamental changes, something that I was not expecting them to do, uh, but this is incredible news. Uh, but continuing on, based on player feedback, our team has also implemented several multiplayer balance adjustments, matchmaking improvements, and refreshed the in-game store with requested cosmetics and bundles, and as always, addressed many pesky bugs. So let's get to the good stuff. All right, let's see the good stuff here. New features, map preference. So map preference makes it makes its debut in Company of Heroes 3 with a simply yet effective tool to define a list of maps you'd prefer not to play on. This will present in all auto-match modes, okay? Through a dedicated map selection screen, you'll be able to downvote the maps you would prefer not to play on. These votes will be saved until they are changed again, and a recap of all voted on maps will be available in the auto match search screen. So as you can see right here, all selected map types at the top left, down in the bottom right, Road to Tunis, Villa Fiore, Torrente, La Aquila, and Oasis Depot. So these are the maps that are downvoted. Um, oh man, I already know what I'm downvoting. Uh, it's This is so easy for me to downvote. I wonder if it's gonna be limited downvotes per mode or if you could spend all your downvotes on one mode because um you know i don't play 1v1s as many of you know so i wonder if i can use that 1v1 veto on a different mode i, I probably not but um we'll see but i'm i'm definitely v vetoing mignano in 3v3 um and in 4v4 what would i what would i veto? I, I actually like a lot of the 4v4 maps maybe monte cavo or uh yeah, I don't know. But overall, I think the biggest one uh, is Mignano in 3v3. That map is brutal. Don't want to play anymore. But I would love to hear what maps you guys are going to be vetoing. Very exciting stuff. Uh, okay, so it is important to note that votes are not vetoes. Ooh. They simply reduce the priority of a map. Ah, uh, okay. Well, still better than nothing. I was I, I was wondering that because like down vote is a very peculiar term. Why don't you just say veto? But this makes sense. So le less probability of getting these maps that you guys are, were downvoting. Hopefully you have a lot of options to downvote uh, certain maps in a specific type. Like if you're only playing threes and fours, hopefully your entire downvoting power can go towards those modes. The matchmaking system will first form games and match together players based on several factors related to ELO, wait time, ping, servers, and more. In this phase, map preference vetoes are not considered, okay? After groups are formed, the matchmaking system will analyze each player's votes, collecting all the maps with the lowest number of or zero votes, and then randomly pick a map between them. Therefore, it is still possible to play on downvoted maps. If, there are, if they are one of the least voted on, this is more likely in larger team games where the number of players and votes can be high enough for that to happen. Map preference will also work together with the map weighting system introduced in late 2023. After the downvotes are applied and the possible map pool is generated, map weight will be factored in to increase the chances of a new map being picked if it is in the generated map pool list. Okay. The number of votes has not changed compared to Company of Heroes 2, equalizing 30% of the maps rounded down. Okay. Okay, that answers our question. However, different from Co2, the vote pool is per map type, meaning that votes are separate across 1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s instead of being all in one big pool. Oh, I see. For parties, all members will copy the, the votes of the party leader. So, my questions have been answered. Guys, this is my first time reading through this, as you can tell. Um, but it's going to be separated based on map type, right? Uh, unit responsiveness. Units will be much more responsive in 1.6.5. 
with input latency for both offline and online matches being reduced by approximately half. So we're gonna jump into that video real quick, guys. This is the biggest change. I like can't stress enough how huge this change is for Micro. It could, it actually has the the potential to change like how the game is played. Um, units are gonna are gonna respond so much better and be so much more effective in their respective roles um, that it's gonna shake up the game a bit. I feel like uh, this change may affect visual smoothness, but we will be monitoring the change if, for future adjustments. You can find the video here. We're gonna jump into that soon. Okay, animation. Several improvements have been made to unit animations so that their gameplay affecting behaviors are less prone to breaking the immersion of for our players. Okay of our players. This includes things like inventory not aiming at their target properly and fixes for units that have their animations glitch or become stuck. These are only some of the behaviors that we have corrected and we hope the result is a more immersive experience for all of our players. We have additional fixes to known animation issues coming in subsequent patches. Okay. Very good. Just added immersion. The game already looks amazing, but just continuing to improve the consistency. Uh, matchmaking. Now, while looking for a game in auto match modes, the game will display the percentage of players queuing as allies versus Axis. This will help you make an informed decision about which faction to choose from while improving the overall matchmaking experience. For example, in the image below, it would likely be faster to find a match as the allies, searching as Axis 80%, searching as allies 20%. Yeah, so this is very reminiscent of Co2, guys. I like this. Um, it gives you, you can generally guesstimate after several minutes waiting in a queue time where people are leaning towards, but I, I like this uh, transparency a lot. Um, Another highly requested improvement coming in 1.6.5 will put an end to the days of spawning away from party members. Should a player be in a game mode where their party does not fill all the available slots, they will not always be placed next to one another. This means friends can now play together regardless of their team size, allowing for better strategy and communication. That's a really interesting change. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I was not thinking about this as a possible solution for um, partial parties or, you know, yeah, partial parties playing with randoms. It really does help because if you're on call with at least one buddy queuing up together, you're at least on the same size side, you can at least cooperate together, not only from a strategic standpoint, but also it just improves your overall experience, right? You're playing with your buddy still. Um, so I like this change hats off to relic for a very creative little way of, um, improving that experience. Uh, and finally, we introduce a quality of life improvement to automatically save match types. Okay, that's very good. Thank you very much. Basic, but necessary. Uh, cosmetics. The in-game store is being refreshed. Oh, thank God. The in-game store was literally the same for a year uh, with new cosmetic sets. Previously, all items in a cosmetic set might not be available at once, or a player would need to acquire multiple bundles to complete the set. Based on player feedback, we have decided to release all items in a set at once instead of releasing them in smaller bundles. Yeah, I like this because it's continuity. If I'm buying a skin package or a set, I want it to be for all my units for the faction so that I can seamlessly move between sets or I can have a, a set that encompasses the entire theme for the map that I'm playing on or the theme that I want to um, provide. So I just think this is this makes a lot of sense to me instead of buying nitpicking little like I have a, a winter camo for one unit and then I have a totally different camo for other units. It just feels bad. Uh, so thank you Relic for doing that. Uh, multiplayer balance changes guys are improved on, are focused on improving some of the infrequently used battle groups choices to create a wider variety of effective strategic paths. Okay, so they've, they posted the balance changes. Uh, you guys can check this out. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And then community event, keep an eye out for our next community event starting next week. Once again, We'll be challenging all our players to work towards a common goal to earn new exclusive items for their profiles. Get your friends together and prepare for drawing the victory. So yeah, we had this previous community event. We we were able to achieve that. I think it was 12 million units deployed in a certain time, time frame, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we got that. It wasn't too difficult. Uh, we had some legends out there like just deploying tons of units. So uh, hopefully we can continue acquiring these uh, cosmetics and these badges and, and items uh, because they are pretty cool. Um, all right, so 1.6.5 patch is releasing in a couple of days. Be sure to jump into our official forums and Discord to discuss the update. Nice. All right, now let's jump into unit responsiveness, guys. Once again, like I said, this is the most important change in a long time. Um, it's hard to cover everything in our game that can influence input latency in a single patch note. So while the following may summarize a few key points, it is by no means the whole picture, okay? But that said, the Co3 engine operates on a variable frame rate fixed time step simulation model. Jeez, now that's a mouthful of words. This model gives our engine the stability and determinism of running a fixed frame rate game state 
combined with the flexibility of rendering a variable frame rate on screen visual state. All right, Relic sounds very smart here. The components of this model can be broadly categorized into an input layer, a deterministic game state processor, and a visual state processor. When the player generates an input, it is registered in the input layer and processed through the deterministic game state. Once the new game state containing that input has been generated, it is released to the visual state processor to be <laughs> interpolated up to 30, 60, 144 frames or more. All right, so this is some big brain stuff, guys. All right, this is for the big brain boys who love to geek out on this stuff. All I know is input latency is cut in half and it's gonna be a lot better. Um, let's check that out. Okay, so they got more stuff down here. With code two, the input layer, game state processor, the visual state processor all run in a single synchronous CPU processing thread, which each system taking its turn in rotation is required for a given processing cycle. This means that an input generated by the player could be immediately followed uh, sequentially by an update to the game state, which in turn could be followed immediately by an update to the visual state. Oh, okay, that makes sense. This order of events provided a tight processing flow for inputs that led to a high response rate that we still hope to match with Co3 today. However, this approach also comes at a cost of visual smoothness. This new system works in rotation. Each one will incur a periodic CPU usage spike resulting in unstable frame rates. Being limited to a single processing thread also means that we cannot utilize the processing power of stronger CPUs. Okay, so with Co3, the deterministic game state processor and visual state processor each allocate their own CPU threads. Okay, so this allows for a much higher and smoother th uh, throughput of frames, but comes at the cost of having to synchronize data between these threads. Oh, I see. So maybe not as linear. Since these threads run independently, the order of events is not guaranteed. Oh, I, I see. Okay, that makes that makes sense. But I wonder. I wonder um, how close they can get to CO2. As a result, an input may be left unattended until the game state processor thread is ready to service it. A common colloquialism used to describe this sort of latency is a frame rule or a bus stop delay. If an input arrives just before the game state processor is ready to start processing a new game state, then its response is seen immediately. If it arrives just after processing has already started, then it just missed the bus and must wait the entire game state cycle before being processed. Another problem to consider is that the visual state processor cannot interpolate past the most recent game state. Okay, this means that if the game state running asynchronously takes too long, then the visual state must halt until the new game state is ready. Okay, so that's probably why you see those large unit lags that, that are very common. Um, I was wondering why that happens, but this would explain it. Where like one unit would be moving and then like a unit is dragging behind and then catches up. Um, this manifests on screen as visual hitch or stutter in the game flow. To combat this, we employ a buffer of game states. If the game state or network server and online game takes too long, we can suddenly adjust the speed of O oh, interplay for the remaining buffered state to seamlessly hide the visual stutter. Okay. What we found in this update was that the buffering algorithm for game states was acting far too conservatively towards game smoothness. And while this commonly produced impeccable visual clarity, it also did so at the cost of undue input latency. The changes introduced in this patch reduce the weighting on the buffer table regarding network latency and CPU load, which should result in a significant reduction in input latency. However, this may make the game more susceptible to network and CPU usage spike, so some players may notice a drop in visual performance or other artifacts. We'll be monitoring this change and be ready to adjust things further as needed. The Co3 programmer team, you could tell that was written by the programmer team because those are the big brain boys who are uh, holding it down for us. Thank you so much to the programming team, to Relic for, for putting in the effort for this. I know Tightrope has talked a lot about how he thinks that this is going to be very difficult to optimize and improve, but let's go ahead and see what it looks like in real time here. Scouts lead the way. This is before. Moving to new destination. 350 let's head out, boys. MS. Stay together. You can see the delay. Clearing a path. We'll find a way. Noticeable delay. Hold it up front. Great. Now we're going to look at after. Come immediate. On. Get the lead out. Almost immediate. We're moving out, fellas. Very quick. You just see him turn super We've fast. We've got there. orders to advance. Clearing a path. We'll find a way. But very cool. Really happy to see that. Really excited about that uh, that change in particular. It's going to have a big impact on the game. And then, guys, we have balance changes. So I might be doing a video on this leading up to uh, the the release this week. Talking about balance, I might have some guests on the channel to discuss, uh, but would love to hear your guys' thoughts uh, on these changes. Um, as, as always, your support means a lot to me. Um, if you guys did enjoy the video, go ahead and smash the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, 
um, and I'll see you guys on the next one.